So the Oscar nominations are out. And I'm exhausted because like a crazy person, every year I wake up at 5.30 in the morning to watch them, even though I have no interest other than fandom and talking to you people about it and tweeting about it. But you know, when I was a kid on the East Coast, it was 8.30 and I would always watch it and I was always excited to see it. So, you know what? Eh, fuck it. 5.30 in the morning, I live on the West Coast now. I can wake up and watch these things. Uh, so, uh, let's get into it real fast. Some quick thoughts. First of all, Best Picture, we had eight nominees. Yesterday, I predicted that Mad Max would get nine nominations. I was wrong. It got ten. But The Revenant got twelve. Um, both of those films, you know, The Revenant got two acting nominations, and both of them cleaned up in the technical categories, you know, uh, editing, cinematography, they're nominated for all these things. Uh, uh, makeup is another one. Costume, they're both nominated for. I am really pulling for Mad Max. I know it's not going to win. I still believe the winner is going to end up being Spotlight. Uh, I feel like The Revenant, although it's got a lot of buzz about it now, that Spotlight is still the quote-unquote important film that ends up getting nominated for, or, or winning Best Picture. So... Spotlight got a little bit of a boost today because it got its first real individual acting nomination and supporting actor with Ruffalo. Uh, Rachel McAdams is nominated. Uh, uh, McCarthy ended up getting Best Director. So, you know, I think Spotlight is still the one to beat. But I wouldn't count on The Revenant. I think it's a two-horse race between those two for Best Picture. Actor in a leading role, there is... Obviously, this is the Caprios to lose. Not really surprised of the nominees. Cranston, Damon, DiCaprio, Fassbender, Redmayne. I can't see any of them beating DiCaprio. Uh, I love Fassbender and Jobs. Nobody seems to have seen Steve Jobs, so that's going to hurt that film. You know, clearly there's not a lot of Jobs love. Aaron Sorkin didn't even get a screenplay nomination. Uh, DiCaprio, he's the one to beat. And the best actress... I still think it's Brie Larson's to lose. She's up against Kate Blanchett, Jennifer Lawrence, Charlotte Rampling, and Shorshi Ronan, uh, who's just so wonderful in Brooklyn. But Brie Larson was my favorite performance of the year. I'm pulling for her. Rampling is an interesting one, though, because she hasn't been really in the, in the race so far. And I could see a lot of people wanting to give it to this great veteran actress but again, I don't think enough people saw the film, and I don't know if enough people will in time for Oscar time. Brie Larson's going to win this. Supporting actor. Sylvester Stallone got nominated, and I really believe that he will win this award. I believe that he will uh, get this groundswell of support, this, this veteran who's been in the business forever, who gave the industry Rocky, amongst other hits, I think Stallone is going to come out of this victorious. He's up against Christian Bale for the big short and Mark Ruffalo for Spotlight. Both those guys, I feel they get lost in their ensembles a little bit, even though Mark Ruffalo has the big showy scene in Spotlight. But I feel they'll get lost in their ensembles. Tom Hardy for The Revenant, I'm shocked he got in there. Uh, Mark Lott Rylance, Bridge of Spies. He could win. There seems to be more Bridge of Spies love than I thought there'd be. But, nah, this is Stallone's to lose. Omitted from this is Idris Elba, who I thought, after getting a Globe and a Sagnum, was kind of a lock in this category. There's been a lot of talk of minorities not getting nominated, a lot of actors of color. And, you know, I would have loved to have seen Michael, uh, Michael B. Jordan nominated. I'd love to have seen Creed gotten more nominations. I kind of expected Straight Outta Compton to get some more nominations. They only got one. It was for the white screenwriters, which is a little embarrassing. Um, Stallone could be Creed's, is really Creed's only chance at an award, and I, I think he'll get it. But those two films, Straight Outta Compton and Creed, should have gotten more. Idris Elba should be in the supporting category. He's the one that I think people should be the most upset about because he's the one I thought was kind of a lock. Uh, the other ones were still kind of outsiders coming in, but Idris Elba should be in that category. I'd put him in over Tom Hardy. I'd put him in over Bale or Ruffalo, too. Actress in a supporting role. 
this is the one acting category that is up for grabs. You've got Jennifer Jason Lee, Rooney Mara, Rachel McAdams, Alicia Vikander, and Kate Winslet. Alicia Vikander and Rooney Mara, I'm sorry, they're lead performances. And I wonder if that's going to hurt them come voting time, whether that's going to get people not to, to, to check their box off, where instead Jennifer Jason Lee, Rachel McAdams, Kate Winslet, those are genuine supporting performances. It's a little too early to tell. You know, I think Vikander's going to win still because they like the kind of the fresh young actress, but I'm not counting any of these people out just yet. Um, some of the other categories that I think are fascinating, cinematography this year is a fascinating category. You have Carol, The Hateful Eight, Mad Max, The Revenant, and Sicario. Sicario, that's Roger Deakins, I believe his 13th nomination. He's never won. I could make a case for every one of those films to win uh, Hateful Eight with 70 millimeter. just how visceral Mad Max is, The Revenant shot in natural light. Carol might be the most gorgeous cinematography of the year, most lush. It's a tough category. Directing is another up-in-the-air category this year. Ridley Scott did not make the cut. You have Adam McKay for The Big Short, Tom McCarthy Spotlight, Lenny Abramson Room. I am so excited. He is so deserving of getting this uh, nomination. Room, I think, is one of the great films of the year, and I'm glad he didn't get overlooked. Mad Max Fury Road, of course, George Miller, and The Revenant, uh, uh, Alejandro Inuitu, Inuritu. Um, Ridley Scott, a lot of people thought he was going to win this award, not even nominated. I'm surprised by that. On the plus side, I wonder if that clears the way for my man George Miller to win. I have to believe Inuritu is the favorite right now. But I can't imagine they're going to give him two Oscars in a row. Only one director's ever won Best Director two years in a row, and that was John Ford. And I don't think they're ready to say, in Yuritu, you are John Ford. But maybe they are. I mean, someone on Twitter pointed out to me, well, if it was the Best Directed Film, he should win. And they're absolutely right. And this is his Best Directed Film, but I would still argue that Mad Max is the more interesting film to have made. Look, they're both arduous shoots. Just the one, people are whining about it a little bit more with The Revenant. Um... You know, those are the major categories. You know, we got screenplay, adapted screenplay. Like I said, Aaron Sorkin didn't get in. I was surprised. You have the big short Brooklyn Carol, the Martian Room. I am pulling for Room whenever I can. Or Nick Hornby, his Brooklyn script is beautiful. But I have a feeling that it's going to be either a coin toss between the Martian and the big short. I can't imagine the Martian not winning anything. But right now, I don't have it a sure thing to win anything. You know, in a lot of those technical awards, I think it's going to lose to Mad Max. And it's not going to win Best Picture. It's not going to win Best Actor. So maybe the screenplay is where they award The Martian. Uh, original screenplay, Big Bridge of Spies, Ex Machina, Inside Out, Spotlight, Straight Outta Compton. This is Spotlights to lose. I feel like, you know... This is the kind of film that, like, I think people look at it as, like, the screenplay is everything. However, they often like to give this to an oddball choice, you know? And it could end up being ex machina. You know, in the past, movies like Lost in Translation, Eternal Sunshine, they won these awards, and it was kind of, let's honor the indie thing. Ex machina fits that bill. But I still would say I would bet on Spotlight... They're not going to give McCarthy Best Director, so let's give him screenplay. Um, what else do we have here? Original score is just interesting to point out that John Williams got his 50th Oscar nomination. Uh, I don't think he will win. You know, the Star Wars music wasn't that unique as opposed to other Star Wars musics, for me at least. Uh, I think it's Ennio Marcone's to lose with The Hateful Eight. Ennio Marcone got an honorary Oscar years before, never won an in-competition Oscar, I wonder if he could be the first person to have been given an honorary Oscar and then win an in-competition Oscar. He's 87 years old, I believe. I'm not sure if that's ever happened, if somebody was, was basically given a Lifetime Achievement Award and then won an in-competition award. I don't think it's ever happened. 
It hasn't happened that I recall. And also, I wonder if at 87, would he be the oldest person to win? I have to look that up. I'm just speculating now. Um, like I said, those are the big ones. You know, animated, we all know Inside Out is going to win, although I love Animalisa and can make a strong argument that that could win. Or should win, won't win. Uh, documentary, I think it's between Amy and The Look of Silence. In the foreign films, I think it's Son of Saul all the way for now. Although, I would love to see Mustang pull out a surprise win. It's a wonderful film that I recommend you go see. So, yeah. Uh, things are going to start to come more and more into focus with each award show, with the SAGs and the DGA and the PGA. And things, who knows, things might even get more confusing. You know, a film like Carol didn't get a PGA nomination, didn't get a Best Picture nomination. Uh, you know, so we'd be curious to see if it picks up any other awards along the way. Uh, you know, a picture like Straight Outta Compton gets a PGA nomination, not a Best Picture nomination. So there still could be some surprises. Okay, if you can't tell, I'm fucking exhausted. I gotta take a power nap before I yell at more people on Twitter about the Oscars. So, until next time. <laughs>